As a theoretical film critic, I'm always drawn to the idea of the little movie that could. Films that might not have the best script, the most talented actors or the biggest budget, but somehow manage to transcend their limitations to become better and more enjoyable than they have any right to be. And it's tough to think of a better example of this than Battle Beyond the Stars, a 1980 Roger Corman space opera about a young man who recruits a group of mercenaries to help defend his peaceful community from a rampaging warlord. Now, if this all sounds a bit familiar, it's probably because you've seen it before. And before that. So yeah, what you've basically got here is a remake of a remake of a classic story ported into a sci-fi setting to ride the Star Wars bandwagon and made by a guy famous for churning out low-budget campy trash. On the face of it, Battle Beyond the Stars should represent everything that I hate about Hollywood filmmaking, and yet somehow the film manages to transcend all of these limitations to become a genuinely fun action adventure that's grown into a cult classic over the years. So fuck it, let's investigate this mystery together. The film centres around Shad. No, not that Shad. A young man living on the peaceful farming world of Akir, because it's named after Akira Kurosawa. They don't have much in the way of wealth or military power, and so they're pretty much defenceless when this arsehole shows up and demands their surrender. This is Sador of the Malmori, and he likes to roam across the galaxy terrorising smaller planets and absorbing them into his empire. His demands are simple. Submit to me, or I'll be back in a week to fuck you up with my stellar converter which will turn your entire planet into a miniature star. Damn man, this guy doesn't fuck around. Now, I have to admit I was never entirely clear on why he's so interested in a remote planet with no natural resources, but whatever. The point is that Akir doesn't have the military strength to fight him off, so instead Shad takes the planet's one remaining starfighter and heads out to recruit some mercenaries to fight on their behalf. He's basically Luke Skywalker in a different story, a naive young man from a sheltered upbringing taking his first tentative steps into a larger unknown world, ripe with possibilities, adventure and danger. He gets his first taste of battle, he runs into a beautiful young woman who agrees to help, and slowly he begins to recruit allies to his cause. And I love that there's such an eclectic mix of different characters and species. There's Gelt, a former assassin forced into exile. His career's made him fantastically wealthy, but he's killed so many people people that there's nowhere in the galaxy he can go to actually spend it. Space Cowboy, who's basically a long-haul truck driver that agrees to join the group when the planet he was headed to gets vaporised by Sador. He even wears a fucking drinks dispenser on his belt. What's a legend? There's also a race of alien clones that share a collective hive mind known as Nestor, who want to join the fight to relieve the boredom of their own existence. And last but not least, there's Saint X-Men, a young Valkyrie warrior that has to win a major battle to prove herself worthy. And damn, the costume department must have had a blast with this one. <laughs> Anyway, with the mercs recruited, it's time to take on the might of Sador and his vastly superior forces. But can seven samurai, I mean seven space warriors, really hope to stop him? And will any of them even make it out alive? I said before that Battle Beyond the Stars is one of those films that turned out way better than it had any right to be, and I think a lot of it comes down to the people who happen to be working on it. A young and mostly unknown James Cameron was initially brought in to work on camera rigging, but when the lead production designer got fired, he eventually ended up taking over practically all the special effects, set design and model work for the entire film. And well, it shows. All the ships and interior sets look fucking great even today. They've all got a distinctive look and design, so you can instantly tell which ship belongs to which character. The Hammerhead in particular is an awesome bit of ship design. It's huge and intimidating, and unlike most of the ships of the time, it's not designed to be elegant and streamlined. It's a big, brutal piece of metal designed to do one thing. Fuck up your day, big time. That being said, I also love the look of Shad's Starfighter and how the front of it looks like a pair of boobs. <laughs> This was also one of James Horner's first film scores, and you can absolutely see the work and care that went into it. Every character's got their own musical motif, and the main battle theme is fucking great. Again, a guy that would eventually go on to massive success basically got his big break with this movie. Damn man, even Bill Paxton worked on this film as a carpenter. The cast are all great in their roles. Richard Thomas is perfect as Shad, starting out as naive and innocent, but gradually developing into a tough and determined fighter. Robert Vaughn and George Peppard are both seasoned pros that know exactly what they're doing, and I love how Vaughn really goes for it at times. He's in a low-budget sci-fi movie, but he's playing it straight as an arrow. John Saxon is menacing and sinister as Sador, an ancient decaying warlord that uses the body parts of his defeated enemies to keep himself alive. And as for Sybil Danning, well, I think she's well aware of why she was cast in this film. Film and she absolutely doesn't care. You know, 
sex. She's just out to have fun with it, and I think that's an attitude that permeates the entire movie if I'm honest. It's played mostly straight, but there's also this slight undertone of campy, light-hearted fun that encourages you not to take it too seriously. Just like Sybil Danning in her skin-tight outfits, it knows exactly what it is and what it's there to do, but it does it to the best of its ability, and I think there's something refreshingly honest and respectable about that. Some movies have got the ability to instantly transport you back to a different time in your life, and Battle Beyond the Stars is one such film for me. For whatever reason, it was on TV all the fucking time when I was a kid, and even today I can watch it and feel like I'm 10 years old again on a rainy Sunday afternoon with the smell of dinner getting made in the kitchen and my dad passed out drunk on the couch. Then I'd be able to steal some of his beer while he wasn't paying attention. Ah, good times. Seriously though, Battle Beyond the Stars could easily have been just another cheap, trashy, low-budget sci-fi movie trying to ride the coattails of something much bigger and better, destined to be forgotten as quickly as it came. But instead, it became a beloved cult classic that's entertained generations of audiences and if you're looking for a fun little throwback to a different era of sci-fi movie making, then I honestly think you'll have a blast with this one. Stick with me. You'll get an education. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.